As they're just standing there, you know, you, I want to look at, for symmetry, uh, both at their elbow um, and at their shoulder areas, their pec, their clavicle, uh, chromium, sternoclavicular joint. I'm going to ask you to turn around for me. And then you get a, you get a good look at their back, too. Um, you, you know, when you're at the back, you've got a great uh, opportunity to look at their cervical spine as well as their spine. Go ahead and touch your toes. You know, in the adolescent age group, okay, perfect. Now go ahead and stand up for me. In the adolescent age group, I was asked them to, to touch their toes. I want to screen for scoliosis. Sometimes we'll pick it up on our exam, and you'll see some asymmetry in the rib humps uh, that many of you guys are used to doing uh, already routinely. And don't forget about the cervical, don't forget about a cervical spine um, exam. I usually ask them to put their chin to their chest, their head back, side to side, and their ear to each shoulder. But what I really like about the cervical spine exams, I want them to do it against resistance. Go ahead and put your hand, uh, head back towards my hand. There you go, real strong. Does that hurt? Okay, now forward for me. Does that hurt? Now, if that reproduces any pain in the neck, you can do a more detailed cervical spine exam or any radiating pain. You may want to focus your efforts back on that cervical spine exam. Okay, I'm going to ask you to put your arms and reach um, up above your head from the side, going all the way up. Go ahead. Great, and come down. Great, we're looking for symmetry of the shoulder blades as they go all the way up, and you're also noting the range of motion as they, ch as they reach terminal abduction. Do the same thing, but go forward for me. Great, same thing here, looking for symmetry of the shoulder blades as well as range of motion. Okay, we'll start your right arm and climb up your back as high as you can. Great, this is uh, a test I use for internal rotation. I document where on their spine he's able to achieve uh, internal rotation, and I typically would then classify according to the level of the spine. I would give this a T12 internal rotation. I then do a, a, a palpation exam at this point, and so I'm going to palpate those same palpation marks that we showed you on that presentation. Those are there for reference. So I start here at the sternoclavicular joint, and I oftentimes I'll do this with both hands and I'll go routinely through each side. But we'll start at the sternum, the sternoclavicular joint. I move over here to the clavicle as I climb all the way over here to that small divot that you see, that, that you see here over the acromioclavicular joint. And then I go to the acromion here. You also have growth plates over the acromion as well. And so in adults, we may see osochromiali as an unfused growth plates, but sometimes you can see that as an overuse injury in a kid as well. I move over here to the coracoid, and then I feel the proximal humerus. And then as I internally and externally rotate the head of the humerus, we've all felt that biceps tendon um, as well. I like to finish my range of motion exam um, at this point after I've palpated. So I'm going to put your arms to the side here like this. Open up like a book. I look at his terminal external rotation, which is about 80 degrees here. Move your arms up. And this straighten them all the way out, palms up to the ceiling. I like to do this in a consistent fashion with palms to the ceiling. I'm looking now at the elbow range of motion. He's about zero there, thumbs to the shoulders at that point. And that's his terminal uh, flexion of his elbow, about 145 there. Put your arms to the side here, rotate out like that. So we have supination about 90 degrees, pronation there. There you go. Uh, and pronation in 90 degrees. So that's a little bit of a, a, a physical exam of both the shoulder and the elbow. Now I'm going to take a look at his strength and I'm going to go over some of the findings uh, as I talk out loud. Put your shoulders up just like that. Yep. So looking at his deltoid, also axillary nerve, also C5 nerve root. Go ahead and thumbs down here. Resist me going up here. So that's a test for your supraspinatus or one of your rotator cuffs that's primarily injured is to put the thumbs down. You rotate the arms in about 45 degrees and he resists uh, upward pressure. Rotate the arms in here, push up. That's resisting forward flexion. Also looks at the function of your biceps tendon. I'm gonna bend your arm here. Uh, resist rotating your arm out. I like to look at resisted supination. Rotate it, there you go. Resisted supination, sometimes I can reproduce pain up at the uh, biceps tendon as well. Flex your arm for me. Resisted uh, elbow, elbow flexion and elbow extension, looking at both your brachialis and your triceps. So a really quick and easy way to look at your median nerve, your radial nerve, your anterior interosseous nerve, your posterior interosseous nerve, uh, your ulnar nerve, is just to ask them to put their thumbs up bend their thumbs down, that's looking at the PIN and the AIN is to watch that IP joint flex and extend, which is a component of both your radial and your median nerve. And I ask them to extend their fingers all the way out real strong and you check their inner osseous of their nerves uh, for their ulnar nerve. You check those and you can pretty much, that's a really easy way to confirm those major nerves uh, are intact. Now, 
I'm going to focus a little bit more, and, th- and then once I, once I kind of go through that quick exam, I can, I so I can move a little bit closer. Now, w- once I grab his hand, I can feel for that radial pulse, move over and check capillary refill if I need to. I can examine the wrist uh, briefly if I need to as well, and I can do a sensory exam, and I may go through it the same way in which I do a systematic fashion. I'm going to check that C5 sensory over the lateral aspect of the deltoid. I like to look at the medial and lateral side of the forearm. When you examine sensation of the hand, I typically ask them to kind of make a, make a gun motion so I can look at both the radial sensation on the outside and the median nerve sensation on the inside. And then as they relax their hand, I can get the ulnar nerve, which is on both sides in that hypothenar area or in their palm closer to their small digits. And then you've, you've done a, a very quick exam uh, of their sensa- sensation as well. Obviously, any positive findings would lead you to want to do a little bit more of a detailed exam, really intended to be a quick screening exam as well. When I get up close to the patient, then I like to look a little bit more seriously at the elbow, and this is where I can go through the elbow exam like we talked about. Now, the first thing I always like to do is feel that radial head, and I put my thumb right on that radial head as I supinate and pronate, and this allows me to really get a good idea of exactly where that radial head is because I can feel the prominences as I rotate. As I go slightly more proximal, you feel the next bony prominence, and that's your lateral epicondyle. As he flexes his arm up, I can follow that lateral epicondyle to that posterior prominence, and that's your capitellum. And that's where we're going to see osteochondritis desiccans, uh, like I mentioned before, in your pitchers and your gymnasts. It's a great opportunity just to, just to continue to your next bony prominence, which is your olecranon, and we'll see problems both at the growth plate as well as stress fractures, uh, stress fractures there. As I move the arm uh, as I externally rotate the arm, you got the medial side of the elbow, and you can see here common injury we see in pitchers and throwers. I palpate the medial epicondyle here. If this is tender, I then may go a little bit more proximal or a little bit more distal to have a much better idea on exactly where this is tender. Sometimes we'll see some soft tissue tenderness. Also, I'm going to make a fist. Uh, flex your wrist for me. And this will fire this muscle group through here, reproducing some of the pain. And that's what we call little league's elbow, or little leaguer's elbow, uh, where they have inflammation of the medial epicondyle here. As we go slightly more posterior here, you see the next prominence is the ulnar nerve. Oftentimes we can see some ulnar neuritis. And then as you go a little bit more posteriorly, you hit that electron again uh, from this side. So really going from front to back on both sides. And that's where we'll palpate. When you have um, one of the exams that we do to to not only reproduce some of the pain um, or to try to look at some of the structures around the elbow is what we call the milking exam. And the milking exam is really forced external rotation to stretch these inside structures through here. So I'll hold my arm at the elbow and I pull on the thumb almost like I'm milking through the thumb. And this may reproduce some pain in here, indicating some overuse injuries of either the ulnar collateral ligament or the medial epicondyle. Now, the milking exam can then be taken a step forward, and I'll even rotate. uh, We call the dynamic milking exam, where I'll flex and extend as I'm grabbing the thumb, externally rotating, trying to reproduce stress through here, kind of like a pitcher will do when he throws. And that's called the dynamic milking exam. Now, one of the common things that we see switch just a little bit, is, is instability. And the one test for instability, if you're wondering if it was a shoulder dislocation or a labral tear, is really the apprehension relocation sign. And so as you, get, as you rest their shoulder blade on the table, I'll externally rotate their arm. Andrew's got about 90 degrees here. And I'll try to continue to externally rotate it under stress. And he'll either tell me that it's in pain or he'll jump up and say, I think it's about to come out. And so you know that that's apprehension. He's, he gives the apprehension sign that a shoulder may pop out. And then the relocation sign is I'll push posterior translation on the humeral head, and I'll say, well, does that make it feel better? And I'll say, oh, yeah, it feels a lot better. So that would be a positive apprehension relocation sign, really a sign that he has some instability or some potential for instability. As you do an exam, you would take it, you can always take it a step further if you're looking for a labral tear or you're looking for biceps tendon problems or really try to narrow your exam. And then that's where you really can get into this long list of special tests. 
So as a, as a screening exam, that was my intention, is to try to present a screening exam. But I would also tell you that as you start getting closer and closer to the diagnosis, I really believe that a majority of my diagnosis can really be made with palpation alone and looking at range of motion. But then as you are trying to look at those other, other issues, whether it's shoulder instability or a labral tear or ligament problems, then you can kind of go through so, some of those um, other tests.